Shore excursions are a major part of any cruise because a large part of your vacation is exploring the ports of call you'll want to visit. You'll have just a few hours at each stop, but it should be enough time to get a taste for the city you're visiting. The concern many guests have is figuring out what options to choose from, which are a good idea and which are a mistake. I'm Christina. I'm a traveler, a planner, and most importantly, a mom. I'm sharing my best tips to make traveling as a family a little less stressful. So put down your phone, pack your bags, and let's showcase the world. Christina and I'm the owner of Showcase the World Travel, a modern travel agency dedicated to helping overwhelmed moms take a break from the busy and actually enjoy their vacation for a change. A cruise is a great way to travel as a family and I've helped dozens of families plan the perfect cruise. One of the areas families seem to get stuck is when it comes to choosing shore excursions. At a very basic level there are two kinds of shore excursions, one offered by the cruise line and shore excursions offered by third parties. Shore excursions are sold directly by the cruise line to its guests, and they are group activities managed by local companies in each port that the cruise line has vetted and will stand by. The great thing about the excursions provided by a cruise line is that they guarantee if they take you on one of those shore excursions, they'll ensure that you do not miss the trip if your excursion is delayed. Even if the ship is slated to leave, the ship will wait for your group to return or provide transportation for your group to meet up at the next port. Furthermore, if your ship can't dock at a port for any reason, weather conditions, any shore excursions you booked with the cruise line will be completely refunded, no questions asked. On the flip side of that, the cruise line provided adventures tend to be a little bit more expensive than third-party shore excursions. They're typically large group tours, which means you're visiting areas with busloads of people, and the tour will move at the slowest person's pace. There's also a little bit more limitation in terms of what you're going to be able to find. With third-party excur excursions, these are essentially any tours or activities that you do on your own that's not sold by the cruise line. It could be a group tour, an individual tour, it can even be just you taking a taxi somewhere and doing something on your own. With third-party shore excursions, you are responsible for planning all aspects of the tour. So you have to find the company or person, negotiate the rate and find them in port and ensure you return on time. There are some great vetted companies like Shore Trips that offer excursions in many worldwide ports that guarantee they'll get you back on time or they'll cover the cost of getting you to the next port. They have some super interesting itineraries that get you as close to the action as possible and are custom or very small shared group tours. Whoever you choose, make sure that you review their policies of what happens if your ship cannot dock at the port and refunds as they vary from guide to guide. Prices for third-party excursions can sometimes be negotiated depending on the excursion and the guide. They are so much cheaper than you would get on the cruise line. So how to get started? I always recommend start by looking at the cruise provided shore excursions first. They're a good starting point because they're simple to find and will give you a basis to compare other options later. Shore excursions can add up quickly, which is why I like to help my travelers build a well-rounded cruise itinerary. I did do a video on how a travel advisor can help help up level your cruise so make sure you check that out here. So here are my expert tips for choosing your shore excursions. First start by prioritizing the port of call that drew you to the itinerary. You know maybe you just picked a Caribbean cruise because it was easy but maybe you picked a med cruise and you picked the specific med cruise because it stopped in Dubrovnik, Croatia and not all of them did. So if you chose that itinerary for a specific, specific destination plan your shore excursion for that destination first because it obviously is important to you. Research what the ports are known for. Before you even look at the shore excursions, you should research what each port is known for. Typically, the individual ports you, are, you visit are best known for something, and then there can be a few activities that stand out based on what that port is, is well known for. So if you're on a Caribbean um, activity and they offer 
dolphin, swimming with the dolphins in every single port. Well, maybe you're not going to choose that in the port that only offers the tequila tasting because that's the only port in Mexico. So you're going to do your tequila tasting in Mexico and do your um, dolphin excursion in Jamaica or in the Cayman Islands. With that being said, you want to diversify each port. I like to pick a different style of shore excursion for each day. So a sightseeing tour at one, a culinary or cultural experience at another, and something adventurous to round it out. If you're on a budget, balance your tour and non-tour days. Research which ports are closest to the sites and have an or have an enjoyable port area. So if you are on an itinerary and you know there, you can walk to some of the sites, maybe that's the port you don't do with a shore excursion. When I did a Western Caribbean, we did excursions in Cozumel and Grand Cayman. We swam with the dolphins, um, but we chose not to do anything on our Jamaica day. We went to Margaritaville and enjoyed an extended lunch instead. They had a great port area where you can walk around um, or take advantage of the empty ship that day and enjoy the pool deck or other activities. I really think that you should try to budget for one wow excursion, especially on a cruise like Alaska or the Mediterranean. One incredible experience is going to create so many more memories than two or three mediocre ones. So um, if you are, you know, cost conscious, then I would definitely plan one incredible excursion instead of doing a few half day excursions on, on, um, throughout the trip that, that don't capture your heart as much. Um, which brings us to balance full day and half day tours. Back to back full day tours can take the relaxation element out of your vacation. Long bus rides and early mornings can be exhausting, especially if you're bringing kids with you. So when choosing an excursion, try to strike a balance between full day and half day tours. You don't wanna return home in need of a vacation from your vacation. Be realistic about your activity level. If you're traveling with little children, you might find your options are even more limited. Excursions with a lot of physical activity or walking might not be good for those with a stroller or who have mobility issues. So take this into consideration when choosing what to do. And pay attention to all of the words. Complicated tours with multiple stops or activities often sound better than they are. The problem arises because people don't want to choose from two attractions. So they figure, why not do both? The answer is you often don't have enough time to visit each place or do each activity properly. When reading a tour description, you have to read between the lines. Compare the number of stops to the number of hours to deduce how long you'll have at each activity. Look at the map and see how far destinations are from the port and determine if you're going to be spending a lot of your time in transit. Um, the last thing I want to add is book small groups and tours early and cancel later. If you're not sure something's going to fit the budget or if your child's interest is going to change, I recommend booking your excursion when the date opens as things often fill up. Make sure that when you're, the, whatever you're booking has a plan flexible cancellation policy, and then decide later. You cannot create availability if you wait too long. So th that's my advice for choosing the best shore excursion for your family and how to create a nice, well-rounded cruise itinerary. If you would like me to help you plan your next cruise, please just click the link below um, and or head to showcasetheworld.com slash get started. I cannot wait to help plan your Cruise. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to take a break from the busy. Let me help you plan your next hassle-free vacation that the entire family can enjoy. See you real soon. Need help planning your next family vacation? Visit us at showcasetheworld.com to request a quote or schedule a free vacation consultation. Want more great travel tips? You'll find those there too.